YouTube, Edgar here, and welcome to Artifexy, and here you will learn everything you ever wanted to know about world building, and then some. So we've talked a lot about stars, Lagrange points, and planetary systems. Now, if you've been building along with me, hopefully your universe will be full of really cool celestial objects. And this is great, but very abstract. Abstract in the sense that we've built these objects somewhat in isolation, and without asking some very important questions. Questions whose answers will have measurable societal, mythological, and cultural implications. Okay, so first up, how bright are my stars? The intensity of a star's light received at the surface of a planet will always be inversely proportional to the square of the distance between that planet and its star. That is, if we take Earth and move it two times closer to the Sun, the Sun would not appear to be two times brighter, rather its apparent brightness would be four times greater than it is now. This gives rise to the equation AB, the apparent brightness, is equal to L, the luminosity in watts, divided by 4 pi times the distance between the star and the planet squared. Solving this for Earth's Sun values reveals that at the surface of the Earth, the Sun appears to be bright to the tune of 1,379 watts per meter squared. Which is seriously cool, but perhaps a more useful world building equation would be the quick comparison equation AB, the apparent brightness, is equal to L, the luminosity relative to Sol, divided by D, the distance between the star and the planet in AU squared. So say I have a star and it's 1.7 times as luminous as our sun, and say a planet orbits this star at a distance of 2.9 AU. Run the numbers and you'll find that daylight on this planet will be roughly 0.2 times as bright as the daylight we experience here on Earth. Now let's ask how bright do my planets appear? This calculation is slightly more involved as planets don't shine in their own right, rather they act as low efficiency mirrors reflecting the starlight that hits their surfaces. Not all of this light will be reflected back into space. Depending on the planet's surface composition, some light will be absorbed and the rest will be reflected back into the retina of our observer here. Albedo is a measure of how much light is reflected. The scale goes from 0 to 1, with 0 being a perfect absorber, i.e. no light is reflected, and 1 being a perfect reflector, reflecting 100% of the light it receives. I'll go into albedo in greater detail in future videos, but for now, here's a list of the albedo values of the planets. Decide which planet is closest in composition to your target planet, and go with that albedo for now. We can tweak it at a later stage. Once we have our albedo, we can determine the apparent brightness of a planet we're observing using the formula A, the albedo, multiplied by L, the luminosity of your star in watts, multiplied by the radius of the planet you're observing in meters, squared. Then divide this all by D squared, the distance in meters between your star and the planet you're observing, multiplied by DAB squared, the distance, again in meters, between the observed planet and your observer. How technologically advanced a society is will have a major bearing on how your planetary system is perceived. The ancient Greeks, who didn't have telescopes, could only see as far as Saturn, but now, with the aid of magnification, we can obviously see much further and have discovered many more objects. Therefore, humanity's perception of our solar system is constantly changing, and I think a constructed setting should reflect this. So Saturn, the last of the naked eye planets when viewed from Earth, has an apparent brightness of 1.3 times 10 to the power minus 7 watts per meter squared. Uranus's apparent brightness is 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 9 watts per meter squared. Let's set this as our range here. Greater than 1.3 and your planet will be a naked eye planet. Less than 1.2 and you'll need a telescope to view it. And in the region between these two values, a planet may or may not be visible to the naked eye, depending on certain variables. Lastly, what are the relative sizes of my stars and planets? To figure out the apparent diameter of an object in the sky, we can use an equation known as the small angle approximation. That is, delta is equal to d, the diameter of the object you're observing, divided by d, the distance between you and that object. Filling in for d and d in kilometers will give you an answer in radians. But we can just as easily fill in values relative to the sun, and somewhat unsurprisingly we will get an answer relative to the Sun. Which, by the way, when viewed from Earth, takes up 0.5 degrees of the sky. 
Our moon also takes up 0.5 degrees of the sky and this is why, here on Earth, we can get total eclipses. So it stands to reason then that the small angle approximation can also be used as a sort of eclipse calculator. So say I'm looking at a star twice as big as our sun, but 172.9 AU away, it would then appear to be 0.01 times the size of the sun at Earth, or 1% the apparent diameter of the sun, or 0.05 degrees in the sky, which by the way is just slightly smaller than Jupiter. Jupiter. Speaking of Jupiter, here's some cool reference points. One of the largest stars in the night sky, Betelgeuse, has an angular diameter as seen from Earth of roughly 0.000019 degrees. Jupiter is 0.008 degrees, and again, to put that all in perspective, the Sun and the Moon take up roughly 0.5 degrees of the sky, which by the way is also the angular diameter of your thumb held out at arm's length. Coincidence? I think so. Guys, if you like what you see here in Artifact Scene, click the links in the description to find me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're interested, hit like and subscribe for more awesome science-based world building. Thank you all so much for watching. Edgar out.